topical retinoids are super hot right now. And one of the most frequently asked questions I get are, I've been using topical retinoids. Should I go up on the strength? Will I benefit from using a higher strength? And how can I increase the strength and minimize irritation at the same time? In this video, I'm going to be addressing all these questions and concerns. Retinoids are by far the most studied ingredient probably out there, but especially when it comes to improving skin aging. Retinoids belong to this large family of vitamin A derivatives. How it works to improve signs of aging, we see it improves fine lines, wrinkles, uneven skin texture, and skin tone. For acne, it helps to unclog pores. Retinoids, they actually normalize and in some ways accelerate that skin turnover and improves that dullness of the dead skin buildup that often is seen over time with age. Two, they actually stimulate collagen production and thereby increase the thickness of the skin overall, which tends to decrease again as we get older. And these things also are further exacerbated or made worse with chronic sun exposure. It also improves the amount of hyaluronic acid that helps to overall give skin elasticity and plumpness. And so in essence, retinoids really help to improve, not completely reverse, but improve improve the process of skin aging. Now, retinoids, as I mentioned, is a large family and there's a lot of different derivatives. The true active form is retinoic acid, which is known as tretinoin, and this is a prescription. And tretinoin is the most studied when it comes to retinoids for improving skin aging. Now, a part of that retinoic acid family, in addition to tretinoin, is tazeratine, which is also a prescription retinoid. One of the main downsides to retinoic acid is its irritation, right? It's got all these great benefits, but obviously nothing is perfect. And because of that, the skincare industry has really tried to venture out and find other derivatives that may have similar efficacy in improving skin aging, but less of the irritation. And therefore, we have in our world, right out in the skincare world, all the different types of retinols and retinol dehydes that do have really good clinical studies in demonstrating the efficacy for improving skin texture, skin tone, and fine lines, and they're definitely less irritating. And that is one thing that we do know very well when it comes to topical retinoids is that they are irritating and this higher concentration leads to more irritation. So obviously when it comes to efficacy, retinoic acid or tretinoin family is gonna be more effective than retinol, which is gonna be slightly more effective than retinol, but it's actually the reverse when it comes to irritation. So retinols are gonna be a lot better tolerated than retinol aldehydes, and retinaldehydes are going to be better tolerated than retinoic acid or tretinoin. So when it comes to anti-aging, what has been shown to be effective? Over-the-counter retinol, retinaldehyde do have pretty good data and they do work really well. When it comes to prescription strength, it's tretinoin 0.025, 0.05 and 0.1% that exist as prescription and similar type of strength for tazeratine. So now let's talk about, are there any benefits to using a higher strength and what the studies show? Cause that's kind of what I can tell you guys, right? Is from clinical studies. Well, there are a handful of clinical studies, well-structured studies that compare various strength of either tretinoin or comparing tretinoin to tazeratine. And I wish it was a straightforward answer and it's not. Right? because some of the studies are somewhat contradictory. What I mean by that, there are few studies that show tretinoin 0.025 compared to tretinoin 0.1%. There hasn't really been any statistical significant clinical differences. What I mean by that is you are not really able to distinguish a significant improvement by looking at the skin between the two concentrations. Furthermore, when they took biopsies of the skin, there wasn't again a significant note difference between the two. You know, the higher concentration may have a slight overall improvement, but again, not enough to make a statistical significant difference. However, from these studies, what we do know is that very low concentrations, which don't exist as prescription, but you may find them say through curology or other services that may offer a very low strength that are not standard prescription. For example, the 0.001%, that strength of tretinoin has not shown to be really any more effective than just a control of vehicle, like using a bland moisturizer. So I think one thing that you definitely want to be mindful of is when you are using tretinoin in particular, you definitely want to go with 
prescription at least 0.025, if not higher. Or you would pick an over-the-count retinol, and those definitely have good data for efficacy. When comparing tretinoin to tazeratine, at the various different concentration, what has been shown is that yes, tazeratine is more effective and provides faster improvement than tretinoin at all the various different concentrations. However, what we do know for all the studies out there on retinoids is that higher concentration leads to more irritation. So something to consider when you are picking your formulation again. Now, one thing I get asked about too is, you know, if I've been using a retinoid every single day for some time, am I still going to get benefit if I can't tolerate it using every day for some reason, but maybe a few times a week? And the answer is Yes, if you've been using a topical retinoid for every day for three months or six months, and for some reason you want to cut back on the use for whatever reason, you are still able to get continued improvement or maintenance of the improvement if you use it three times a week. There's no studies that show are you gonna get improvement using it once a week. So I would say, Go with the studies three times a week. You're still gonna get benefits if not continued improvement of your skin. Some other things you wanna think about if you are thinking of changing to a higher strength. Number one, what is your skincare goals? What is your skin health status? If your goal is merely to prevent and maybe delay, and if you have very mild signs of aging, like say you're in your early 20s, early 30s, and you want to just really get on top of the game when it comes to aging more gracefully, then really I don't see any benefit truly by going up on the strength because you're going to just get more irritation and not maybe even be able to tolerate the regular use. So this is where using an over-counter retinol on a regular regular basis or just sticking with your low strength tretinoin is where it's really gold. Another thing to think about is if you have very damaged and aged skin where you have not only fine lines or wrinkles, but you are getting you know deep wrinkles, these are things that topical retinoids will not solve no matter how high the concentration is. This is where pairing with resurfacing laser, microneedling, deeper chemical peels, Botox and fillers are all going to be really helpful and it's all working together, right? Another thing to think about is have you given your retinoids enough time to work? Before you switch, topical retinoids, regardless whether it's over-the-counter, retinol, or prescription, the two benefits really comes with six months to a year of use. So if you just started a topical retinoid and you're at six weeks into it and you haven't noticed a significant improvement, well, guess what? You're not going to by going up on a higher strength besides the irritation. So really give it some time and reconsider it after using it for six months to a year. One thing we didn't talk about was acne. Now, one thing that studies have shown, hands down, higher strength does improve acne more effectively. You definitely may be able to benefit from seeing a dermatologist and getting on a higher prescription strength. If you are interested in increasing and you want to try to minimize the irritation, here are a few things that you can do to hopefully help you better tolerate and minimize some the burning, peeling, and flaking of your skin. Number one, you want to start off very slowly. And what I mean by that is maybe consider only using it once or twice a week. Gradually see if you can increase to every night use. Use it at night. You may want to even consider that retinol sandwich technique, which is cleanse your skin, apply moisturizer to damp skin, wait for that to dry, give it, you know, five to 10 minutes, apply your retinoid sparingly, and then put on your moisturizer. A trick that I recommend is putting a little Vaseline at the corners of your mouth, your nose, your eyes, just so that way they don't collect in these areas. And because these are the areas that tend to get extra flaky and dry with tretinoin or topical retinoid use. Adding on one night a week and over the course of four to six weeks, gradually see if you can increase to every night use. So I hope this video provided some insight and answer some of your questions. My honest opinion is the best thing is just to pick a retinoid formulation that you like, that you're able to tolerate and able to use on a long-term basis. Please comment below with your questions and I will try to go through them individually and answer all of that. Again, thank you so much for watching. You can find more information on skincare on my social media, on Instagram and TikTok and I will see you guys next time.